Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to do a video with my rabbits and come clean about a couple things I've been hiding. First of all, as you can see, I know my rabbits don't look the best and they're outside. So I'm going to be dressing all of that. And I'm also going to be talking about some things that I've kind of been avoiding but I think are really important to talk about. One of my favorite things about YouTube is how transparent of a platform it is. When you're watching people on YouTube, they're real life people with lives just like yours. And it's not like you're watching a celebrity. So I think it's really important that we talk about all our flaws and all the mistakes and issues that we have, especially when it comes to animal care. The first thing that I've been a little bit secretive about is my subscriber count. I've never really felt a need to hide this in the past because for me, it was never about the numbers. But as I started making more commentary and critique videos, I noticed a lot of people telling me that my points were completely invalid because of how many subscribers I had. And honestly, I just found that really frustrating. So I decided to remove the ability for you all to see how many subscribers I have. And in that, I've gotten a lot of new subscribers since then. And people either tend to think I'm a lot smaller than I am. Oh my God, did you guys see that? He just sprayed pee everywhere. <laughs> but yeah so a lot of people tend to think I'm bigger than I am or I'm really small so oh my gosh that is nasty that's why they're outside <sighs> so I really wanted to keep the number of subscribers I had a secret but also I think it is really exciting to grow and I think this channel is not just my channel but I think it's everyone's channel so I do want to share that we're coming up to 500 subscribers which I know for a lot of bigger channels is minuscule. People probably gain 500 subscribers in a couple minutes, but I think it's really exciting because it took me a while to get here. So if there's any cool videos you guys would like to see in celebration for that, please let me know. The next thing you guys are probably wondering is why my rabbits are outside and why are they separated? I have addressed this a little bit in previous videos because it didn't get here overnight and it was a gradient. But basically, my rabbits aren't spayed or neutered, and I've had a really hard time with them being extremely hormonal, not using the litter box, and fighting a lot. So I still don't know if I really should be talking about this, because I don't want anyone to do exactly what I've done, only because I'm not a rabbit expert, and I think everything is a case-by-case -case basis, and because I can't completely know what circumstance you or your rabbit is in, I don't really feel like I'm equipped to advise for that. But I do just want to talk about what I did, why I did what I did, and why I actually regret it. I got my first rabbit Sachin three and a half years ago from a breeder at eight weeks old. When I got him I was just 15 and I'd watch a lot of rabbit care videos and I knew proper rabbit care so he was living in my house in a huge X-pen and I always thought that I'd get him neutered at six months because that's what everyone suggested. I remember when Happy Tails actually came out with a video on rabbit care and she was the only person I had ever seen suggesting that you don't have to get your rabbits spayed and neutered, which I thought was really fascinating, but considering she was the only one who was saying it, I was sure that it's wrong because all my other rabbit idols had their rabbits fixed and they were saying that it was a necessity. As I had him and I did more research into animal care, it didn't make sense to me why people in the rabbit community were so insistent on spaying and neutering your rabbits, but for pretty much every exotic animal, it was done on a case-by-case -case need basis. I'm not talking about dogs and cats because unless you're breeding, they really should be neutered because there's no way to prevent unwanted and accidental litters. I also noticed that a lot of YouTubers were getting their rabbits fixed at different timelines. Some people had even waited a year or even a couple years to fix their rabbit. So I didn't feel like I was in any hurry. And as my rabbit started approaching the six month mark, I didn't notice any aggression or any issues using the litter box. So I decided that I'd wait and if I ever saw something wrong, then I'd get him fixed. As I got older, I realized that spaying and neutering had a lot of risks, especially for rabbits. Even though especially neutering is a relatively harmless procedure when a vet knows what they're doing, most vets, especially exotic vets, aren't that experienced with rabbits. Exotic vets are supposed to treat birds, reptiles, rabbits, hamsters. Pretty much an exotic vet treats everything but a dog or a cat. So they aren't very specialized in every single species because they treat so many. Rabbits are also extremely sensitive animals. If they don't eat for more than 24 hours, they can potentially go into GI stasis and die. So knowing everything that I knew, I really didn't feel comfortable taking any risks when I didn't notice anything wrong. Looking back, I did notice that he was a little bit more aggressive as he got older and he started nipping a lot more. 
I don't believe the nipping was due just to his hormones. I think a lot of rabbits just communicate through biting and a lot of people take it as a bad way, but his nips were never really aggressive. They were just his way of communicating. So if he wanted you to pet him, he would nip you or if he was done with you petting him, he would nip you. And again, these weren't aggressive bites. They were just little nips, even though they really hurt. Actually, I take that back because I've been doing more research into dogs and especially chihuahuas and other small breeds. A lot of people actually don't get them fixed because the surgery is just so dangerous to them, but I don't really know enough about that, so I'm not gonna comment. As we both started to get older, I still didn't notice any major issues with him, so neutering was just never a priority, but I decided that I really wanted to bond him to a friend. I really felt that I wasn't giving him as much attention as I had in the past and since he wasn't living in my bedroom anymore since I developed such severe allergies, I just felt like his life would be so much more enriched from having a bonded companion and especially in the US, I think a lot more people are understanding of the- Did you just pee? Ew. But especially in the US, I think people are a lot more understanding that rabbits are really social and really do benefit from being in a bonded pair. And regardless of what people were saying, I knew that even if I could spend unlimited time with him, I couldn't flop next to him and I couldn't groom him and I couldn't communicate with him. So I really wanted to get him a second rabbit and I also thought it would be fun for me since I had some extra time. Rabbit. This is not my second rabbit, but I actually did get, here, go play. I actually did get my second rabbit, which was him. I had such a good experience getting my first rabbit from a breeder that I decided to do the same. This was before I knew about flat nose syndrome in rabbits and how unethical rabbit breeders really are. So I wouldn't recommend doing it now, but at the time I found a really reputable breeder for Holland Lops, which was the other breed that I wanted. So I got him at seven weeks. I just felt like I would have better luck if I was able to bond a baby with Sachin since he was older and I felt like Sachin was at the age where a lot of his hormones would have died down so I felt like that would be good so right as Sachin's hormones were dying down the new rabbit's hormones would be starting. I still wasn't sure if I was going to keep them both unneutered. My plan was to try to bond them and I really liked going through a breeder because I was able to have all her advice and all her help and she obviously deals with a lot of unneutered rabbit considering she breeds. So I had a lot of help with that and I was able to successfully bond them and I really wanted to make a video about it. I was just hesitant to talk about it so soon. So this all happened last year. So I had successfully bonded two unneutered male rabbits for almost a year, which I think is, I don't know if I wanna say if it's impressive or just lucky, but that's what I did and it worked for me. There was never any extreme aggression between them. And even now, a lot of people ask me why I have them so close to each other. They share a cage wall. And that's because they were bonded for a year and they still do get along well. They honestly haven't showed any extreme fighting and there hasn't been any blood or any injuries. There's just more fighting than I felt comfortable with. So I felt that separating them before things got too bad would be good. And even now they spend a lot of time flopping next to each other and grooming each other through the bars. But they also do spray at each other and I do sometimes notice them nip at each other, which is why they are separated. We lost the light, but Anyways, I'd had my rabbits bonded for about a year and I felt like things were going great and I didn't see any purpose in putting them through an unnecessary surgery. A lot of people are very controversial on whether spaying or neutering again is necessary, but I never noticed any issues. One of my rabbits wasn't great with using the litter box this man here but I always assumed it was because I was never very diligent with litter box training like I had been with my first rabbit and it didn't bother me too much and it wasn't anything unbearable and like I said in my previous videos there are some rabbits that just don't litter train as well as others so I was completely okay with that. Now I know a lot of people might think what I did was extremely dangerous and have a lot of criticism for me and I'm completely open to that. There's a reason I haven't talked about this online and I've kept it so secret and it's not because I'm scared of the criticism, it's because I know what I did can be extremely dangerous, especially if you aren't experienced with rabbit body language or exotic species in general. I feel like there's a lot of possibility for it to go wrong, so I don't think I'd recommend anyone else to do what I did, but I just want to share that this is what I did. Also, the idea of having unneutered animals bonded together is not new. 
guinea pigs, which are fairly similar to rabbits, you can have two boars or two males bonded together. Again, it doesn't always work and having an age gap between them is really good. If you can have one who's around three to five and if you have a baby that usually works really well or sometimes it helps just to get one neutered and one does fine without being neutered. It really depends on how the hormones affect them specifically. Also, I just want to throw this in there. I'm not sure how true it is for rabbits, but with a lot of other species, when you're buying them from good, reputable breeders versus getting them from rescues or getting them rehomed with unknown backgrounds, a lot of times you don't have issues with hormonal behavior, like rats, for example. If you're getting feeder rats for $2 that are supposed to be snake food, they probably don't have the best genetics, and a lot of times they can be extremely hormonal and not able to bond with other rats. But if you are buying well socialized rats from a proper breeder, then they're usually a lot calmer and you can have unneutered males together. But like with rats, no matter how good of breeders you get them from, there are some rats that are just extremely hormonal and you have to get them neutered. There's a channel on YouTube called Emiology, which is awesome. I love all her rat videos. She has one of her rats crumble and she's had rats for years and she's had to get a couple of them neutered here and there just because they have such issues with extreme hormonal aggression. So even though I did have success having them unneutered and bonded for a year, I still decided to neuter them. I would do it sooner, but due to the COVID crisis, it's been pushed back to mid-June, which just feels so far away right now, but May's coming up, so hopefully it won't be that long of a wait. I mainly started having issues when spring rolled around because it is their mating season, so there's a lot of hormones running through their body. I also felt like I haven't been the best and able to give them the best care because it's also been final season. So I know I've been slacking off in a lot of areas, which is why I decided to move them outside. I honestly just haven't been able to keep up with the cleaning, especially with them not being completely bonded. They're spraying each other everywhere, which if you see little orange marks on them, it's not blood or dirt or anything like that. They're literally peeing on each other. I'm not sure if I feel like neutering them is completely necessary, but honestly, just a precaution I want to take, especially as I get more busy throughout the semesters and I don't have time to monitor everything so closely. And I really don't want there to be a possibility of them fighting again next year, even if it is just once a year, that's still way too much for me to deal with. So I decided to just go through with the neuter. Fingers crossed that everything goes okay. I was able to find a really reputable exotic vet here. I think it really does depend on your area, but after hearing everyone else's positive reviews, it makes me feel a little bit more confident. I still do realize it's a risk, and right now it's a risk that I'm willing to take for the sake of my rabbit's happiness, because the setup that they're in right now, they aren't living their best lives. And I just want to wrap up this video again with why they're outside. Like I said, it's mainly because I couldn't keep up with the cleaning. They've been terrible with their litter boxes, and since they're not completely bonded, they're spraying each other 24-7. So there's urine everywhere, and with it being finals week for me, I decided that this was the best option. We've also had really good mild weather, so that's been working out well. I wouldn't do this in the extreme sun or if it was really cold outside, but since it's a perfect temperature in my area, I feel like this is a really good option for both them and me. The area I've lived, I've actually loved my rabbits outside quite a bit. I know that's pretty controversial and some people don't agree with it, but it's something I've been doing ever since I had my rabbit and I haven't had any issues. I think it really does depend on your area. Where I live, there's no wild animals and I live in a pretty urban neighborhood and we have really good fencing. So even if I love my rabbits completely out in the yard, which I have done a couple of times, there's no way for them to escape. I feel really weird making and uploading this video because I don't think I'm qualified enough to be talking about this, but I do just want to be transparent and share my experience. Again, this is not something that I recommend people to copy, and I really think it's important that everyone does their own research. Spaying and neutering does have a lot of benefits, but I think a lot of people just are ignorant to the risks or they aren't talking about the risks. And even if it is a small percentage of rabbits that do die while operating, that small percentage of rabbit could be a rabbit. And I hate when numbers come into play with animals. I don't care if there's a 0.1% chance of him passing away because to me he's irreplaceable and I wouldn't want to take that risk unless I felt that there was something really good that can come out of it. <coughs> Thank you all so much for watching. I would love to make a video in the future discussing spaying and neutering for rabbits in more depth. I really think that I need to have a lot more information before I do that and probably a lot more qualification 
because topics like these really do have a huge impact on your rabbit's lives and I don't want anyone to be doing something based on my advice that isn't actually the best for their rabbits. I want every rabbit to live the best possible life that they can and I'm going to do my best to provide all the information I know to make it to make that happen. So thank you for watching. Let me know if you guys have any special video ideas for 500 subscribers. Again, I know it's not a lot and I'm not trying to brag, but I just think it's really exciting. So thank you. Bye.